So now that you've had the opportunity to review your contract and take it home and have your parents sign it and bring it back in, it is time for us to connect those safety rules to the bandsaw itself. Over the next couple minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you each one of those safety rules and how they relate to the bandsaw. It's your job to make sure that you're comfortable with this, that you have a solid understanding of how those rules are going to keep you safe. I want you to have a positive experience. I want you to enjoy working on the bandsaw. It's a lot of fun. You can be very creative and you can build things that you have in your mind by manipulating wood on the bandsaw and that's a fantastic opportunity. But remember when we talked about this before, fear when it paralyzes you and you can't use it is a bad thing. But that little voice in the back of your head that's going, uh, you need to pay attention and if you don't, you're going to get hurt. That little voice called fear, that's a good thing. And I've been using machines since I was your age and I still have that little voice. That little voice tells me that if I'm not focused on what I'm doing, I'm going to hurt myself. Number one, I will always wear my safety glasses when working on the bandsaw. We won't run any machines in the room unless everybody has safety eyewear on. You don't necessarily need to be standing right next to the machine to have something fly up and hit you in the eye. I have witnessed on numerous occasions in my career where something has been pinched between the uh, blade and the throat plate and it has actually shot itself across the room and it could hit you. So you want to make sure that we always have safety eyewear on when we are in class with the machines running. If you wear glasses, these are the ones that you're going to wear. They have extenders over the top. You'll wear them right over the top of your glasses. If you don't wear glasses, you will use the ones that have the colored bows on them. And these fit tight against your eyes. My normal glasses are my safety glasses because I'm around machines all the time. These are actually rated as safety glasses and they come with side shields. So I will always make sure that I have my side shields on uh, when we're getting started as well. So again, number one, we will always make sure that we have our safety glasses on when working on the bandsaw. Number two, I will make all adjustments to the bandsaw with the power off. There are basically two adjustments that you are going to be making. One of them is adjusting the fence. This is the fence. It slides along the fence rail and it allows you to make a parallel cut by holding your material against the fence. This is considered an adjustment and this adjustment should be done with the power off. The second adjustment, which is I think a bit more dangerous, and that is changing the height of the blade guide. You would raise this up and you would tighten it so it would stay up based on the length of the, or the width of the material that you're cutting. So again, number two, you will make adjustments to the bandsaw with the power off. Number three, I will always keep my fingers at least two inches away from the blade. This is the blade right here and it comes down and runs through the throat plate. The throat plate actually is two inches in diameter. So if you're cutting and you get to the point where you're about to touch that throat plate or you're right over the top of the throat plate, you're closer than two inches. You're a matter of fact, one inch away from getting cut. So you wanna make sure that you're always aware of the distance between your fingers and the blade, constantly checking. Where are my fingers at? Where are the blade? Where's my fingers at? Where's the blade? And if you do that, you will not have to worry about getting cut. Number four, I will keep the upper blade guide set at a quarter of an inch above the material that I'm cutting. The upper blade guide is this right here, and it is adjustable. A bandsaw is capable of cutting quite a thick piece of wood, um, but if we're cutting a thin piece of wood like this, we do not want all of that blade exposed because it obviously is a safety hazard. If we keep that blade covered up, now we have a guard in front here that covers the blade up, making it much safer for us. 
So the safety rule is that we're going to keep the upper blade guide set at a quarter of an inch from the material that we're cutting. And for those of you that have a difficult time visualizing what a quarter of an inch is, it's the diameter of your pencil. So if you put your pencil in there and set it down, this is how you tighten it up. If you do not snug it up, it will simply fall down and then remove your pencil. And now you have the proper height. Again, we are going to set the upper blade guide at a quarter of an inch from the material that we're cutting. Number five, I will make relief cuts when cutting tight curves. So I've drawn a shape on this block and I've got a pretty tight radius going on right here. If I try to run the bandsaw through that radius, I'm going to break the blade. So I'm going to have to make some relief cuts. Relief cuts is when you cut in from the outside up to the object and then back out. Cut in, back out. Cut in, back out. Cut in, back out. And you will do this multiple times. I'll probably have to come from this angle. So I'm going to cut a series of cuts up to the object and then I'm going to back out. When I'm done, I'm going to come back and then I will be able to cut around and these pieces will fall away. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut some relief cuts and then we'll come back and we will show you how to cut that out. I'm gonna trim off some extra first to get it out of the way. It'll make my relief cuts a bit shorter. So now I'm going to make a series of relief cuts down to my shape. In, back out. In, back out. And there we go. We have a series of relief cuts. Now I'm going to come back in from the top here. I'm going to come down and I'm going to cut between the cuts. These pieces will fall away and it will keep the blade from binding. All right, let's go cut these relief cuts. There we have it, a nice tight radius without straining on the blade. And number seven, report any problems that you may find to the instructor. The bandsaws in this classroom are pretty old. Uh, some of them date back to the 1960s. I spend most of my time repairing the bandsaws out of all the other pieces of equipment in the room. But one of the things that you can help me out with is if a blade has a hairline crack in it, you can help diagnose that. If you're listening to the saw when you're cutting, if you hear a metal on metal ticking sound and the ticks are evenly spaced apart, that is a good indication that there is a crack in the bandsaw blade. And the reason they're evenly spaced apart is because the blade is a solid band of steel. And every time that blade comes around and passes the guide block, which is right down here at the bottom, that metal on metal ticking sound will be there and then it'll go all the way around and it'll do it again. If that happens, please bring that to my attention. Turn off the saw, grab the out of order sign off the bottom of the saw, place it up on the top, and I know that I need to come over and I need to service that piece of equipment. And the last safety rule. Before you walk away from the bandsaw, make sure you've turned the power off and the blade has stopped moving. You will know that the blade has stopped moving because you will be able to see the teeth. 
If the blade is moving, that will be an absolute blur and you will not be able to visually see the teeth of the blade. So once again, make sure that you've turned off the power and the blade has stopped moving before you leave the bandsaw. The last thing that you would like to do to help keep your classmates safe is drop the upper blade guide. You are forcing them into coming in and making the adjustment and that helps keep your classmates as safe as well. So remember, using the bandsaw is a lot of fun, but it's a great responsibility that's being given you. And you need to make sure that you are following the expectations and the rules for using it in order to keep yourself safe and your classmates safe. I hope you have a wonderful experience on the bandsaw. And remember, if you ever have a question or you want just somebody to come stand beside you to make sure that you're doing it correctly, don't hesitate to ask.